So, you want to be a Splatoon YouTuber. You're so excited over Splatoon 3, or perhaps even Splatoon 4, 5, or 6 to come out in the future. Well, you've come to the right place, my friend. As someone who's been making Splatoon content for more than half a decade, I've become the best Splatooner of all time. All these individuals who make Splatoon content, yeah, they're all trash. None of them are that guy. I'm, I'm that guy. How's that for an ethos-filled introduction, English teachers? No, but over my time creating content, I've learned a few useful things. A lot of what I'll say is mainly the stuff that worked for me, but everyone's journey is a bit different, and different people may have some varying advice. That being said, I wanted to keep things broad, so even if you wish to create a different style of Splatoon content than me, the formula should have a good shot of working for you as well. Now let's get into it. Part 1, the electronics that make gameplay go burr. Before you can even make your first video, you need to know with what you're going to make it with. In this first step, people are going to often be split into two different groups. The rich and the poor! Those who can't afford or already have more high-end equipment, and those who are stuck with simpler equipment. I'll come back to the first one in a second, so stay tuned. But, for my friends on a budget, if you have a decent phone camera, then you can just prop that up and use that first. There's a lot of people who think they need to wait until they have some cracked PC or bougie mic before they can create content, but if you just have something that can record your game half decently, and a mic that can record your commentary half decently, you should just start with that. No matter what you have when you start, your first videos will not be your best down the line. I start with a capture card and a headset and I still sounded soulless when I first started. Today we'll be trying out the 2.8.0 update weapons. So this Blue Show Max 7, the Aerospray PG. The very first thing you should try working on when creating your content is a form of stage presence or personality. So if someone clicks on your video, it sounds like you have some clue what you're doing instead of being as lost as your viewer is. It's something that I try to establish with my own videos where they start out all dynamic with the edits and continue with a confident, albeit often stuttering, voice leading in until the end. Virtually no one can do this on the first try, so make videos until you can come back to them and sense more confidence and security in your voice. If you net a couple subs and then that's even better. Also, you can always just unlist those videos later in case 16 year old you doesn't want people to hear prepubescent you. Now, once you do save up a little money and can afford some new stuff, here's where things get fun. So one thing you'll need is a new capture card that's at least 20 bucks. If you're looking for a new one from popular companies like Elgato, it can be over 100. You also need a new PC that can handle it. If you're getting a pre-built one, that'll probably set you back at least 700 bucks. If you're commentating, then you'll probably need a mic. That's another 30 bucks right there. Then there's a $300 Switch, a $60 copy of a Splatoon game, a monitor that'll take at least 100 bucks from you, and you might need two if you plan on being a streamer and your TV isn't the right place and an editing software that actually can be free or a couple hundred bucks depending on your choice. See why I say it's just best to start with what you have now? If you can only get some of those products, then usually you should prioritize audio more than video. In my opinion, it's better to have a camera that looks like this while your mic still sounds like this, than a capture card that displays this while the mic sounds like this. Now that we're done with the equipment step, let's move on. It only gets more important from here. Part two, the content. Wow, content creators make content? Who would have thought? So now that you've created your setup, it's time for you to figure out what type of content you want to make. Now there's a wide variety of content under the umbrella, pun intended, <laughs> of Splatoon for you to pick at already. I myself specialize in scripted content and challenge based content where I satirically poke at stuff we already know and bend it to create something new. Some creators like to make story based content where they create a couple of characters and make a whole narrative about them. If you think you have a good amount of know-how about Splatoon, especially if you're a competitive player already, you can make tips to spread your game knowledge or spark debates about the game. And other creators do this. memes. They, they, they dabble in memes. Each type of content has the potential to do well. You just need to find something that makes your stuff unique. You can borrow similar styles inside or outside the community and then use them to make something of your own. Inside the Mine was something I had taken from Shane Dawson and Slimesicle, but no one did it for Splatoon, so I wanted to try it out. There are numerous Pokemon Nuzlocks, and Alpha I did a Smash Ultimate Nuzlocke, but almost nothing like it was done for Splatoon, so I started a ranked Nuzlocke trend with its own unique rules. If you take a popular concept someone else has done and spin it in your own way, you can own the market for that particular niche that can draw in new people. Then if that content is being searched a lot at that time, you may be in for a pleasant surprise. The goal of your content is to be either as entertaining or informative as possible. If you're doing the prior, your job may be a bit harder. While trying to entertain, every second of the video matters because that can be a second the viewer will click off. This is where the stage presence can be important, but there's also another part that coexists alongside it. Carpal tunnel, I, I mean editing. 
Have you noticed how in my recent videos, every couple seconds I change clips, zoom in, throw a sprite on screen, or use an effect? All that is with the intent of keeping the viewer's attention. Like the stage presence factor, this takes a lot of time to learn and I'm still by no means the best, but I at least make more of an effort to edit videos than I did back in the day. If you're doing shorter videos or informative ones, usually people will stick around though if you get to the point quickly. That's why you don't see the hosting expedition videos or honest ads edited in the same way. The good part about this is if you feel weak in one department, you can compensate with the other. If you don't like spending dozens of hours in front of your computer screen and being awake until 3 a.m. on a Saturday morning editing, then you can make sure your commentary is entertaining with interesting statements or in my case, witty comments. If you like editing more, you can have less or even no commentary in your videos and instead blow people away with the effects that you put in videos. But since we're talking about ways to grab and keep viewers, let's talk about the algorithm thing that makes your numbers rise or fall. This is the thing that you put your videos in and it tries its best to find the audience that suits said video. Also, it's what every creator immediately screams at like boomers do to millennials. Once you're done with your video, you need to give it a proper description and tag so it has the highest chance of being seen by the right people. At the time of me saying this, I haven't made it yet, but if you look at the description of my video, you probably see the words Platoon 3 a couple of times, and some other terms might be alongside it. You usually want to make your titles as simple as possible, so the description is the best place to dump these keywords in. Just keep the description, you know, a description. For my nosy viewers who like to snoop in the description and comments five seconds after a video starts, caught you didn't I? You can link your other series to rack up time someone spends on your channel. With the description done, the other two parts of the searchability triforce are the title and thumbnail. You want to have a title that's easy to read and a captivating thumbnail. There's a bunch of places you can make thumbnails for free. As for titles, if you simply read it out loud like you've never seen it or are intrigued, then it's a good title. If you need help with titles, well... Oh yeah. Tying back to the content part, this is where you'll be rewarded for making similar but unique content to others. Now that you've gotten the keywords sorted and the video itself is nice, it's possible that it can pop up next to or below the videos of others. For example, if I go to an episode in my Nuzlocke series, other videos might pop up to the side. These could be videos about challenges that you're given by viewers, or challenges that'll end up sending you to the loony bin. A mixture of searchability, retention from a well-made video, and watch time from binge sessions slowly but surely get the ball rolling. Now that you know how the algorithm kind of works emphasis on the kind of, you made it to the final step. Part four, the weirdos who like to play squid game just like you. This is the most fun part, getting to know other people in the community. Now don't do it for a robotic reason like, hello there, fellow human organism. I currently have a YouTube account with 68 subscribers. Can you add to that number? Sure, sure, sure thing. Thank you, ah ah, nice -oo. Just get acquainted with other people. You can start by talking in chats, discords, and reddits to meet others. When you do, don't look at them as possible to a number, see them as people, fans of the same game that you are. Get to meet some creators around the same size as you and form little groups. They even become acquainted with some larger ones in a more casual way. Don't be too pushy or force yourselves upon anyone because we all have our different personalities, comfort zones, mental spaces, and we all have to do something else. What is it? Oh yeah, live a life outside of the internet. Beyond the arbitrary numbers that rack up, we get to interact with actual people that share the same interests as us. Doing all this will make being a Splatoon content creator a fun thing that you enjoy instead of something that you grind for a bigger number or bank account. Okay, well really just a bigger number because you aren't getting minimum wage doing this for a while. And those are the main things I've got for you. There's also other things like don't promote where you're not allowed, be accepting of all backgrounds, never compare your growth or self to other creators, and have fun with it over all else, and never Never make any type of other content because once you make Splatoon content you can never change because there's only like a 4% chance the algorithm will let you. But those four topics were the main things I wanted to cover. If you're a creator and there's something I didn't mention that you want to elaborate on or something I didn't and you want to bring up, let me know in the comments. If you're more of a viewer, comment what you feel makes a good Splatoon video. And remember to leave a like and subscribe to Star Someone 6 for more content on Splatoon and other things gaming. I'll see you all next time.